part of the video. That stopped being played. Right. Shh. Holly, whoever she is, has written an algorithm. Shh. Work through Holly's algorithm using these values. This, you have to be so careful because the instructions here are, are really strict. So don't you're working using the table. Use one row for each step where any values change. And only write down values when they change. Write down the values that are printed. So the bit that I missed first when I looked at this is we actually have a column here to write down the steps. And that seems really irritating to do that. But anyway, what we do, we start with step one. Introduce two positive integers, A and B. We're told that in step one, step one, A is 30. And B is 18. Step 2. Now I made the mistake at first and then crossed this out going straight to here. And here you see. But step 2 will go in step 2 row. And it says, let's see is A minus B. A minus B will be 12. Step 3. If, uh, well hang on, we'll read this first. If C is less than 0, C isn't less than 0. So we don't do that. <laughs> Step four, if C equals zero, C doesn't equal zero. So we're not doing that one. Step five, <laughs> if C is bigger than zero, let D equal A, <coughs> B equal A, and E equal B. E equal B. So we seem to have ended up there. Step six, let F equal D minus E. So we can do the steps. Six, F is D minus E, 12. Step 7. If F is less than 0, F isn't less than 0, so we'll ignore that. Step 8. If F is equal to 0, no. Step 9. If F is greater than 0, it is. We're in step 9. Let D equal F. Let D equal F. And then go back to step six. Step six said, let f equal d minus e. So step six said, let f equal d minus e. Step seven, if f is less than zero. Ha <laughs> this time it is. So we're going to do step seven. Let d equal e. So that, what is e? 18. So put 18 there. And let e equal f plus d. E equal 18 plus minus 6 is 12. And go back to step 6. Step 6, we're back to step 6, says let f equal d minus e. f equals d minus e. 6. Step 7. If f is less than 0, it's not. Step 8. If f is equal to 0, it's not. Step 9. If f is greater than 0, we're on step 9. Let D equal F. Let D equal F. And then go back to step six. Step six. Let F equal D minus E. D minus E minus six again. If F is less than zero, step seven. Let D equal E. D equal E. And then let E equal F plus D. E equals F plus D. Six. Oh, six. E. Am I right there? E. Oh. E equal F plus D. I put it in one place. <gasps> six. Right. And then go back to step six. Oh. Let f equal d minus e. If f is bigger than zero, step nine, let d equal f. <coughs> the will to ever do any of this stuff ever again, aren't you? I quite like this one. You liked this one? Yeah. Where are we up to? Step nine, D equals F, go back to step six. Step six says F equals D minus E. F equals D. Oh! 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 Zero! 
Step eight. We've not done a step eight yet. This is thrilling. If f equals zero, let f equal d, let f equal d, and then, whoa, jump to step 11. Step 11. Step 11. Let G equal A divided by F. A was 30, F is 6, so that's 5. And step 12, let M equal G times B. So 5 times 18 <laughs> is 90. 90. <laughs> Print the values of F and M. Where's my printer? Okay. That actually just means write them. So uh, we're going to write that the values are, what are the values? G, no, hang on, F values of F. So F is 6, M is 90. We've ended up with 6 and 90, called F and M. Ooh, I wonder what those letters stand for. Um, part 2, describe what happens when A is 18 and B is 30, you know you need only record enough rows of the table to be able to show what happens. So, well, we've got a new table. What do they stand for? To do this all over again. Ah, wait and see. <coughs> um, if we do this all over again, we write them the other way around, 18 and 30. We follow through the same steps. We get to step 2 and we write a minus 12 there. Um, but then by the time we get to step 3, we're writing 30 and 18 in those places, because <coughs> it, it, that's what it tells us to do. And then we do step 6, which means we put a 12 there. And, and actually, at this point, I noticed, can you see, we've got exactly the same bit. We had a step 3 followed by a step 6 that looked like that. Actually, for the rest of it, we'd just do the same things all the way through. Nothing would change now. So again, it would produce... Um, what was it? F as being 6 and M as being 90. Right. Um, without doing further calculations, state the output values of F and M when A is 12 and B, B is 8. Without doing further calculations, well, they had given us a clue. We asked a moment ago what F and M might stand for. Here we started with 18 and 30. Can we make any connection between the numbers 18 and 30? And F telling us 6 and M telling us 90. Well, the highest common factor of 18 and 30 is 6. And the lowest common multiple of 18 and 30 is 90. So we're looking for F as being the smallest number that goes into both of them, M the biggest number that, or the smallest number that they both go into, so it's the biggest number that both go into. So for this one, in this case, the highest common factor of 8 and 12 is 4, and the lowest common multiple of 8 and 12 is 24. And that's what we would predict they would be, and uh, that's, that's that. Irritating question, wasn't it? But, um, there you are. Unless you really liked it. Right. That's the end of that video.